I used to be a calligrapher. That was my side job when I was auditioning. Um, I did calligraphy for a lot of weddings and big events, so I love the art of a handwritten note, and I think it's a really lost art form. The best handwritten note I ever received, it's probably from my dad when I booked my very first pilot, saying, Meg, I knew this day would come. So proud of you, I still have it, in a little jewelry box by the side of my bed. Hello, how are you? I don't know why everybody has such a problem with her. She's, she was so nice to the paparazzi. I mean, almost like she's the one that called them there. Good to see you, you too. Uh, I went to put books together of how much she talks bad about the paparazzi and there's so many clips of her bitching about the paparazzi. But yeah, she's the one that is calling. Each time you see that grid as the people that are taking the pictures, that is her or her staff calling how to the paparazzi. Very telling to me that the royal family didn't update their website until they absolutely had to. Do you think Charles was hoping uh, that Harry and Meghan would say, oh, you know what, we, we actually don't want the title. Well, I think this is a, a very sad indication of, of King Charles's weakness. He should have signed the letters which prevented them mm -hmm. taking the titles. And just in the same way that he can't decide, really, whether Harry should come to the coronation or not. I mean, clearly, as a father, he'd like him there. But this isn't about being the father. This is about being the head of the nation. And he should make quite clear that Harry is not welcome. But everything about Charles is so indecisive. He can't even at the moment decide whether he should wear a uniform or not uh, on the, car, the coronation or breeches. And he can't decide which religious group should be represented. This is the problem with Charles and has been throughout his whole life. He wants to please everybody and he poses as a confrontationist and it doesn't work. So he should have, visibly the Sussexes, cancelled the titles. And he should make absolutely clear that Harry is not welcome. And the thing is, he would have had the public on side. He will. And uh, the public will be very against him if Harry comes. That is what he doesn't realise. Well, and what's going to happen there? Because what has really annoyed me over the past couple of weeks is Harry and Meghan, yet again, uh, are treating the coronation as if this is some sort of reality show, some sort of game. Oh, we've received our email invitation now, but we're not going to reveal whether we're coming or not. It's so transparent that they want to make it all about them. Well, absolutely. That's where the Buckingham Palace is failing because they shouldn't allow them to get away with it. After all, <laughs> so well done. So brilliant. It's like, it's like between that and the South Park thing, Emily, it's like the comedians have a, they do a better job of bringing home someone's stupid, narcissistic, woke BS than, you know, the pundits could take a year to do. And it, it's taken us, like, as a culture, several years to wear comedians. And Chris Rock is generally pretty fearless. But as a culture where we feel comfortable laughing at Meghan Markle, because for a while, her charges um, of racism to her critics, that this was sort of any criticism of her was categorically rooted in white supremacy, really cowed yes. a lot of people out of even dealing with it. And I think ended up giving, on a serious note, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry this a whole lot of cultural cash. That's how they got deals with Netflix and Spotify the, to the tune of millions of dollars. They're involved with the Aspen Institute, which is like kind of censorious. They're critiquing our First Amendment and involved with a, a, a First Amendment type of group or a, a press freedom type of group. And all of that is because they were able to build and build and build on their reputation in the absence of criticism because so many people were afraid to criticize them in the early years that they were weaponizing those charges of racism. It's not, of course, to say that they didn't get any of it, but to cast, you know, categorically all of the critics as racist has always been ridiculous. People loved Meghan Markle until she started being annoying. And that's when the tide <laughs> turned. <laughs> that's actually a very good point. I would like it noted for the record that uh, I was one of the early critics and was on to her game very yes. early on. I was on that Piers Morgan show that wound up to him, in him leaving Good Morning Britain. We were both ripping on that Oprah interview. It was absurd on its face if you were just objective and not under the woke spell of like, oh, we've got to support her because she's got a black mother. No, this is a nonsense lying person. And if you paid any attention to her, it became apparent pretty quick. Quick. Um, the thing is, though, 
she won't she won't own up to any of this. Now, she'll, certainly she's not going to reverse her claim on the racism uh, just because Chris Rock said it, though Harry seemed to, right? He did his book tour, Eliana, and he was like, did she say that? Did she use the ter- term racism? And Tom Bradbury's like, well, she said, you know, that they were concerned about just what color the baby's skin was going to be. And he's like, she didn't use the term racist. So that somehow means that's not what she was implying, even though all the news media ran with, she says there's a racist in the royal family and she never went out to correct them. Will she come out to correct herself? Because she also said the royal family's racist because there's been debates about what title little Archie's going to get. And she suggested that's because she's half black and Archie's one quarter black. And that was her other charge of racism. And now we get the update today via the Daily Mail. Harry and Meghan have christened their daughter, Princess Lilibet Diana, and they have updated the website or are, will now be updating the website to call little Archie Prince Archie. And the whole concern was when Charles becomes king, will they get what is normally bestowed to the grandchildren of the monarch, which is the title of prince and princess? And she was saying they're talking about not giving that to him. Well, they got it. So are we reversing our claims of racism now or aren't we? Where do we stand on that? Uh, so ridiculous to me that Harry uh, on that point acts like he would never say anything negative about his family. If my memory <laughs> serves correctly, uh, you know, he basically said that of them. Um, and beyond that, uh, these two uh, ditched the royal family, came to the States. Um, it's not clear to me why, having said everything they've said about the royals and the culture of the palace, uh, why they would want these titles for their children. Um, that that yeah, seems exactly somewhat right. puzzling to me. Because they have their they have their titles and they have their royal stationery, and this means nothing to them. But it's super fun to be a royal, so you can pound sand if you don't like it. And they may or may not go to the coronation. They've been invited to the coronation, but these two losers. I mean, as if they they're going to skip that. Does anybody believe that they have they ever chosen to forego a chance to be the center of attention or on cam? They will be. I there. mean, Lord knows and those Netflix not, cameras are following them to that coronation. I know Although, it's their not. only cultural relevance. Guys, I can't thank you enough for watching and for being here. It really means the world to me. I really appreciate it. Uh, I have lots more videos coming out, so check back lots. If you want to further support the show, I do have merch available. Recollections may vary. Make it make sense. You know all that stuff. Also, we have Patreon, patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recast, where you can become an executive producer and get a shout out in a video very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye.